Logan the Layman Critic here. Today I'll be reviewing The Flash. It stars Ezra Miller, Michael Keaton, and Sasha Kaye. It's directed by Andy Muschietti. There will be a few spoilers, so just a heads up. Let's talk movies. Frustrated with his inability to prove his father's innocence in the death of his mother, Barry Allen, aka The Flash, discovers the ability to travel back in time using his powers of speed, despite being warned by Batman. In trying to rescue his parents, his actions lead to the creation of a world without the Justice League. And without a Justice League, the Earth doesn't stand a chance against an imminent alien invasion. Now Barry needs to find whatever superheroes he can to build a new league before the planet is destroyed. Now I'm going to come clean and tell you that I'm one of those weirdos that actually liked the Justice League movie from a few years back. I'm not talking about the Snyder Cut. I haven't actually watched that version yet. I mean the one that actually got released on the big screen. Now, it was far from perfect, but I enjoyed many aspects of it, and among them was Ezra Miller as The Flash. I loved the quirky and manic energy that he brought to that role. He played it sort of as a super-powered underdog who's just excited to be with other superheroes, and that gave his character a very endearing quality. Now, a lot of that energy is brought back to this film, uh, but doubled. And when I say that, I mean that Ezra Miller has to play two different versions of Barry Allen because of the time travel element. The past Barry is obnoxious and immature to the nth degree, leading to a lot of frustration for present Barry and the audience. Now, a lot of people might find these interactions to be grating, and I can understand that. On the other hand, I think it shows us the progression of his personality in a unique way without having to do the conventional origin story like most comic book movies. The film really starts to find its groove once the two Barrys try to form a new Justice League, starting with Batman. This was the reason I went to the movie. This was the reason most people probably went to see the movie. I love Batman, but I really love Michael Keaton's Batman. And I'm happy to say that he's still got it. Now, it should be noted, he's not exactly the same Batman as the one from the two Tim Burton movies. He's more of a version of that Batman. Because of all the mechanics regarding time travel, characters have changed and taken new trajectories. Time itself has been warped. And I appreciate this because it does allow us to explore new possibilities without feeling that the character has been ruined, i.e. Luke Skywalker. Uh, the action scenes with Batman, great. I love them. Now, obviously, they're more beefed up from the films we got in 89 and 92, but it didn't feel like a huge disparity either. I really only had two complaints. The first is that they played into humor a little too much, particularly at the expense of the character. Keaton, obviously has a great sense of comedic timing, but his Bruce Wayne and his Batman have always been fairly low-key in that regard. This film suffers a bit from Marvel Syndrome with all the catty dialogue, and there's a moment where Batman fails to intimidate an enemy, and it's meant to be played for last, but it's not funny. And In fact, I think it actually makes his character look weak, and they could have easily cut it out, and it wouldn't interrupt the flow of the film. But I think the biggest joke that I hated was when they referenced the fact that Batman can't turn his head. Now, I realize we all know, watching Batman 89, watching Batman Returns, the costume design, he could not physically turn his head. I think it destroys the fantasy suspension of disbelief, whatever you want to call it, to reference this in the film. We as the audience already know this stuff, but in the fantasy... I can simply view this as Bruce Wayne having a unique physicality in his Batman persona. Plus, it looks more dynamic, more dramatic. It fits with the aesthetic of the Tim Burton movies. Now, once you break that fantasy, you're introducing the question of how he couldn't possibly be dead from having such a horrible design flaw. So I, I thought that humor went too far. It's funny, but I don't like it. And that's the first complaint. The second thing is the excessive nostalgia baiting. This is a big problem with film these days in general, and this film is no exception. Recreating Wayne Manor in the Batcave? Great. Loved it. It's awesome. Throwing in old villain gadgets and Bruce's wanna get nuts line? Excessive. Contrived. Don't like it. Uh, moving forward with the story, Batman and the Berries both managed to find Supergirl, played by Sasha Kaye. Now, I don't have too much to comment on regarding her performance. She plays the part well, her costume is cool, she's easy on the eyes, but 
we don't get enough screen time to invest in her journey. She goes from one viewpoint to another in a fairly short span of time. I do hope that they keep her for future films, regardless of whether or not they choose to, you know, completely restart the franchise. She has an intensity about her that I think works well, especially in her fight with the bad guys at the end. And speaking of the bad guys, well, uh, they suck, which is to say that they have minimal presence in the movie. Michael Shannon came back as General Zod from Man of Steel. He's great in that movie, but he has little to do here but make a speech and fight Supergirl later. And that's about it. There is one other villain that I won't spoil, uh, but that character has even less screen time than Zod, and the showdown with that character is underwhelming. The only saving grace from that is the final resolution. It, it provides us a great emotional moment for the berries. And one last complaint, and this one doesn't really bother me as much as it has with other reviewers um, that I've that I've noticed, is the special effects, the CG. It looks very rough, very unfinished, has a very rubbery quality. Um, I feel like in general, CG in films today has not been very impressive. I, I almost, I wouldn't even say it's plateaued. It's more like it's just gone downhill i can't think of i mean other than avatar i can't really think of any film that has really made cg that looks convincing um or high quality uh, it, it does look cheap here but i like i said it doesn't doesn't really bother me for some people they might find it uh irritating the i would say that the uh the key word here to describe the cgi is uncanny valley it's it's very, very apparent here. But there you have it. The Flash is a film with a lot of fun action scenes. It's got great performance from Ezra Miller and Michael Keaton. It is hindered by some of its humor, and a few of the characters needed more development. Obviously, I just mentioned the CGI. But overall, it's well worth watching, especially just to see Keaton suit up as the Dark Knight one more time. So go check it out, and thanks for watching.